Welcome back to the second session of Art as Therapy. I'm Yoko. In the first session, we learned how to make your own paper and create a journal to pen your thoughts and feelings. Today, we'll be learning about art appreciation and how to create art from found objects. Some people say they don't like to see art. Perhaps they feel like they don't know how to appreciate it. Or maybe they feel nothing as they find art hard to understand. Others might find that it is not my cup of tea. However, there are many reasons why we like to see or appreciate art. Firstly, we do it for pure aesthetic pursuit or pleasure in seeing beauty. Art is aesthetically pleasing to the eyes. It can make us happy, lightens our hearts, and brightens our day. Secondly, it is to expand knowledge or understanding for educational or research purposes. Through looking at art, we can gain insights or knowledge about our history, culture, or society. Thirdly, we view art to analyze, interpret, or offer critique. We are able to offer or express our views and understanding of the arts. Fourthly, it is to get inspiration. When we see and appreciate art, we get a glimpse of the artist's lens and eyes. Lastly, we look at art to experience a feeling. Art enables us to feel inspired, connected and soothed. Therefore, I continue to appreciate art. Personally, I like how the artist Robert Henry puts it. Art appreciation, like love, cannot be done by proxy. It is a very personal affair. The edge of art appreciation is one resource that can help us to recalibrate on what is valuable to us and what we admire or love. In our daily lives, we are so used to things or our habits and we want to master our skills in habituation. We tend to lose sight of the value of what is before us and yearn for excitement, stimulation or attractions. Imagine a cup in front of you, what kind of attention would you give to this cup? And imagine the same cup being painted or framed or displayed in a museum. And then what kind of attention will you give to this cup? When we look at art, we are able to draw much more intricate and direct attention to the shape, form and texture of the subject matter. In other words, it is a very modest way of learning to appreciate and give attention to things. With the practice of art appreciation, we can respond to many other objects, situations, moods and people around us which we may have habitually neglected. Seeing art is also an emotional encounter. Through artworks or images, we enter the narratives of the creator's mind and life. Some images may bring glamour, sickness or distress of experiences that we will most likely not have the opportunity to participate and feel, while some images offer us antidotes to reconcile with our own wisdom or feelings. Seeing art helps to awaken us to the real merit of life that is unique to us. Let us look at some examples of artwork and see how we can appreciate them with a therapeutic lens. When you look at the art here, what is the first feeling that you have? You can observe the colours, the light, the scenery that the artist is appreciating and imagine why would this artist paint the lily pond? How was the movement of the water? and the colours of the flowers. And how do you feel when you first look at the artwork? Do you find any resonance in your life and the artist's life? Let us look at this artwork. When you're looking at this artwork, you may ponder why would the artist paint these crows? And you may also ask where are the crows flying to? Are they flying to the artist or are they flying away? How did the artist feel when he saw these crows?
The meaning of appreciation is that we focus on the good qualities of things. I think that appreciation of art is also the appreciation of life. This means that it can be representations which can be beautiful or ugly, experiences or memories that can be real or unreal, and simply things that can be simple or complex, usual or unusual. The door to appreciating art is always open for us when we can embrace the duality, meaning the opposition or contrast of the aspects of life. In simple terms, a farm object is basically an object that could be man-made or a natural object that is found or being collected or even some fallen leaves or flowers that uh, you found from the garden. So in art, found object is defined as any object that the artist or art maker find interest in it and he or she wants to use that found object in an artistic contest. For instance, um, the art maker may find interest in this photo frame and also this camera. The artist or the art maker can put them in a complete form or sometimes the found objects can also be used in parts. Like we can break the found objects up and then we can use it to make into a new piece of artwork. There are a few ways artists or art maker can use art found objects. For instance, the art maker wants the viewers to look at the form, how the object is arranged or composed, so they can just put the found object out there and draw your attention to it. Some artists would also like to create a new narrative to look at the found object in a new way that could be related to social, cultural or a personal narrative. There's also an, another way that artists would like to challenge the way that we treasure or value our, uh, these objects. For instance, like this is a, a typical um, makeup brush. It's a commercial product for beauty, right? An art maker or the artist may want to invite you to look at this object and challenge the way that how it is being valued. And they can also make a composition of it. Like this. Or like this. So there are different ways that you put the found objects together and you will confront or uh, challenge the way we look at the found object itself. So I have collected some objects, uh, found objects that uh, hold special meanings to myself. I think it's almost like a collection or an array of objects that was um, uh, that I encountered in my life from childhood to uh, later years and now. So here I have some childhood toys that are like that kind of very small plastic figurines, and I have chosen these because I. I think they are very feminine and uh, when I was young, I always dreamed to uh, wear high heel shoes and these kind of very beautiful dresses. I have been keeping these for years and I don't know how to use them. So maybe today I would like to try to make them into a, a piece of work. I have also gotten a few pieces um, of buttons and also a wooden bead also remind me of my um, grandparents and my uh, uh, parents how they sew a button for my uh, shirt or my clothes I have also uh, selected these few items which are also like um, 
old, but I don't want to throw them away. So they are just uh, with me. This is uh, a camera, an instant camera, but it's already spoiled. So I find that itself is a very nice piece of work, like an artwork. And at last, I'm fond of uh, wood, wood pieces. So I collect a lot of uh, wood pieces. So I thought maybe I can use uh, these pieces of wood for this artwork as a base, maybe. Let's see how um, I would like to uh, recompose a new piece of work with these found objects. I don't know what it's going to lead me to and what is the final outcome like. I'll just give it a try. So now I have uh, roughly know how I'm going to put them, arrange them, and I'm going to paste them together. So uh, I'm going to make some glue, like a paste. So I thought um, I may just put them together, like frame. Okay, frame. So I, I'm going to use some paper mache. We can also use some paper that uh, we tear from home. So I'm going to make a mixture of paper mache which I can tear pieces of paper. I mix with some glue and then I'm going to add some water. I'm trying to put some paper mache as a base to put on my board. If you don't have paper mache, it is very uh, flexible and uh, you can be creative and this is really very personal and subjective. You can use glue, you can also use tape and it is really depends how you want to uh, present or put your found objects together. Sometimes some artists or art maker they will just basically place the found objects in such a way that is perhaps unusual or special way of putting them together. Like for instance, you can put it upside down. So this is how I would like to arrange my found objects. It's almost like a theatre. I think uh, I have created a theatre of personal objects that um, I find personal meanings and stories in them. I'm going to have a final touch. I just realized I have not put in this comb and it seems that um, there's not much space and I don't really find it uh, you know, nice to put it in at the moment. I think it's fine because as an art maker or uh, the creator, you, you have the final say, you can uh, do whatever you want. The decision is really yours. Now I have created a little theatre of all my found objects and I have left with this comb and also this uh, instant camera that I, I thought, yeah, maybe it goes well with this collection, right? Sometimes you may go to a museum and you may see artists who put things together. If I put this uh, camera next to my theatre, it is a piece of work. Yeah? Because they have special relationship in such a way that it has meanings to me. So that's why I want to put them together and present it to you, to the viewers. But of course, it can also be without this. You can always take it out and then this work is also a piece of work on its own. So I have finished uh, making this uh, piece of artwork using found objects. Maybe I'll title it My Theatre. We have come to the end of today's session. To summarize, we have explored the psychological and emotional effects when a viewer sees or appreciates art. 
We have also learned a few visual responses on how to appreciate found objects and create a response art using found objects. I hope you have enjoyed the session. Remember, the door to art appreciation is always open for you. See you next time.